Welcome to Mental Wealth, the podcast to invest in your mind. Here I will help you make sense of your mind and behaviours, giving you the tools to have your best life. There is so much to share, so let's get into this episode and explore another great topic. Welcome to episode 49. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about purpose. And I've actually got a very special guest who has got purpose tattooed on her body. So it felt totally right for us to home in on the word purpose, what it means and how we can make those changes. So first of all, I would like to introduce my special guest today, Abigail. Please introduce yourself. So hello, everyone. My name is Abigail Gagnon, and I am the host of the Beautiful Legacy podcast. This is actually the first time I'm a guest on a podcast. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I am married. I have been living in New England my entire life, but I am now in Maine, so a different state than I was raised in. Um, I love reading, listening to podcasts, spending time by the water. I actually live in a home on a lake. And so water definitely I love, I love water so much. Um, and yeah, I was homeschooled, oldest of four siblings. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Brilliant, brilliant. I love that. And I love the fact that you're noting that you love to live by water or be by water, because I think like for me personally, that resonates. I was brought up with a lot of water around me and it definitely makes me feel good. And it, if we actually notice how good you feel when you are watching or listening to water. Yes, absolutely. I feel like that is one of the few places my mind can actually be quiet <laughs> is by water, which is awesome. Yeah. But I think you raise a good point that we sometimes don't tap into the resources that are out there for us that do calm us down, that do slow the thinking down, that give us a focus, that give us something to look at, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think sometimes people will try different things and then think, oh, well, nothing's going to work for me. And they just give up looking for that thing that can help. And it's like, just because something else didn't work for you, that means you're one step closer to finding what does. Yeah, I think you're right. You raise a good point. I think just if try something and if it doesn't work for you, then that's OK. The, it, the, like you say, you know, that's a no. And then you can think about what's next. Yes, absolutely. I love that. Okay, so tell us a little bit now about purpose for you, because obviously when I have a theme set for my podcast, purpose being one of them, I look for guests who can help bring this to life with me rather than it just be me talking about it. And then when we were chatting, you tell me that you've got the word purpose tattooed on your body. So I think we need to start with that. What does it mean to you? Why, why does that? Ha- why have you got that? So for me, I was, and I don't know if I should be trigger warning this or anything, but I was suicidal um, 11 years ago and I felt like I had no purpose. I felt like, you know, the world would be better off without me and it was really hard. And the camp that I worked at at the time and worked at for many years after, the people there really helped save my life. And I am a Christian. And so I do credit that to God as well, but he used those people. And I'm just so, so grateful for those people and that place giving me a purpose and allowing me to feel like I had a purpose and that I was making a difference, even though I was working in a kitchen and I wasn't always working directly with the guests. Like I found ways to be able to be there for those kids. Like I put a whiteboard out in the dining room and wrote verses on it every day. And there were multiple kids that were like, Oh, I love this verse. And I learned it and um, different things like that. And I tried my best to, you know, be able to be there for everyone as much as I could. And I don't know, I just really am grateful for that place. And so I think it was a couple of years after I moved out, I got it tattooed with the camp logos on my shoulders, which a lot of people made fun of me. They were like, why would you do that? I was like, but that gave me purpose. Like, even if I leave, And now I have left that place. Like it reminds me that like, I still have a purpose. And I think sometimes people get so stuck in like, this has to be my purpose for forever, whether you're a mom or whether you're hosting a podcast or whether you're working at a camp, um, whatever it is, I think our purposes change. And sometimes our purpose doesn't have to be this big grand thing of, you know, hosting a podcast or 
doing all these things, sometimes our purpose can just be small, like just reaching out to somebody every single day and saying, how are you doing? Because that can mean a lot to people. And so I guess it just kind of reminds me that I, my life is worth living. And even when it feels like it's not, um, and even if I feel like I don't have this big grand purpose, I do have a purpose because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Abigail. And I think it is, you know, that's why I create this podcast, because I think it's important for us all to hear sometimes that uh, lots of people can lose sight of themselves so easily. And yet it's looking for those little bits of the jigsaw that help bring us together. And so often it can be the simplest and smallest things, can't it? And I love the fact you've raised that because I think it's something that a lot of my listeners need to sometimes remember that we don't need to be tapping into these enormous goals necessarily, these big, massive purposes. Having that daily purpose, having that something to focus on is kind of, it ends up maybe getting us towards the bigger goal in the end. But actually, yeah, exactly. so, you know, it's so important, isn't it? Because I, you know, I think you're right. We we end up not doing something because we feel like it's not enough. It's not big enough. It's not connected to that bigger picture. But for me, you know, just stripping things down and just what's your purpose for today? What's your purpose? Why am I doing this? And what is it heading in the right direction? I think is a question that so many people more could ask themselves. Exactly. I completely agree. And like with um, several years ago, I started getting sicker chronic health wise. And I started kind of going in that spiral of like, now I can't do all the things I want to do. And I think we put our worth so much in what we do and not who we are. And when people ask like, oh, who are you? You start listing off all the things that you do for people. And I think sometimes it's important to remember that it's not always what we do and we don't have to do anything to matter and be worth something. Um, And so around that time, I had a group on Facebook and I added a couple people and then they added people. And it's kind of grown into this big thing where we've got messenger support groups and book studies and Bible studies and all kinds of different things. And through that, I then was like, you know, I used to go live a lot and sometimes I don't feel up to going live or don't want to go live because I don't feel well. But I thought, oh, well, maybe I can kind of minister to people doing a podcast and I can just do voice and it doesn't matter how I look and all of that. And it has started to grow. And so I think that, like you said, it can add on slowly and it doesn't have to be this big thing. Like I'm not a resolutions person. I pick a word for the year and I focus on it. And my word for this year is bold. And I want to, you know, reach out to people, ask them to be on my podcast or be on other people's podcasts and like, just do things that may scare me because, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I think sometimes we get so stuck in, oh, this is scary. And then we don't think about the fact of like, what's the worst that could happen? And maybe the worst that could happen isn't all that bad. And it can just propel you into what you're actually supposed to be doing. Mm, I think that's a good reminder because we do, we, the, from a human brain, and that's what I study, the human brain's perspective, we absolutely want to stay safe. We want to have that f- feeling that we feel comfortable, but actually that doesn't get us anywhere new does it It doesn't let us grow so being able to just do that thing that scares you or do that thing that's a bit different usually isn't going to be as bad but also what might you gain at the other side of it you know I love the fact that you are consciously putting yourself forward for things that are new with that view to whatever's next and that's what can be exciting but I guess scary too Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be that big thing to start with. Like with my podcast, for example, I started it and I just shared it with some friends. So unless someone looked up my name, they wouldn't even know I had a podcast. And then once I got more confident, I started sharing it more and making social medias for it. And, you know, I didn't even have my face as my um, like cover photo for the podcast at first. So it was like, I just want to start doing this. I want to put myself out there, but I'm not quite ready to have you know, people to be like, bam, that's, that's Abigail right there. So I think that it doesn't have to be this big thing. And I think that some people get so stuck of like, oh, I have to have all the answers. I have to, you know, have a business plan. I have to have a name. I have to have social media. I have to get an email for it. It doesn't have to be this big thing to start with. You can start small 
And then as it grows, as you get more confident, add to it. Because I think that's why a lot of people don't do things because they're getting stuck in the planning part. And as a planner myself, Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of that before, but I've tried as I've gotten older and I'm not that old, I'm only almost 30, but as I've gotten older, I've realized like you don't have to do that, you know, just make some small goals. This is, you know, obviously with a podcast, you kind of want a purpose for it. You want to have like certain words or like kind of guidelines to stick in. But besides that, just to start it and keep changing it as you go. As long as you're communicating with your audience, they're not going to care. It's, you know, better to be authentic than just, I don't know, be super rigid and stay stuck. I think you're right. I think that overwhelm is the feeling that I kind of resonate with the most. It's that where you feel overwhelmed because there's so many things that you could, should, ought to be doing, but actually just starting and making those steps forward. And I think something that springs out for me with you, Abigail, is you are giving back when you, when it, your purpose you know, you said you didn't feel like you had a purpose. Other people helped you. And I imagine that so many people who you're helping now in that zone, in that space that you're in now. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of people reach out to me, some people that I don't even know that have been like, oh, my gosh, your podcast really encouraged me. And that is what I want. It's honestly to be the biggest and best podcast out there. But if I can help one person, and I even have an episode of the podcast about this with a guest, Jackie, um, talking about the fact that even if we just impact one person, that person can then impact other people. And so many people can be impacted by something that you said, even though you've never even met the person and they never, they don't even know who you are. Yeah. And I think sometimes we can get so focused on numbers, especially with social media these days where it's like, oh, well, if my video doesn't reach 50 million people or thousands of people within the first day, I'm just going to take it down because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And it's like, but what about that one person that you did impact? What about that one person that you influenced? And also too, like if you had, you know, 50 people listen to an episode of your podcast and you had 50 people literally standing in front of you, you would think that was amazing that those people were encouraged by you. So why, when it comes to social media and podcast numbers and whatever, does 50 seem like nothing? I just, it doesn't make sense to me. And I'm guilty of it too. But I think that that's something that I'm trying to work on more um, with the podcast, with the ministry, just, you know, in general, is just to realize that my post doesn't have to have 50 likes in order to have made a difference in someone's life. And even if it was just making a difference in my life by putting it out there and listening to my gut and listening to what I needed to put out there, then it impacted me. And I think sometimes we don't think about the fact that we can impact ourselves and that matters too. I think so. And I think that comes down to your purpose as well, doesn't it? Is, you know, having a purpose, I'm putting this out because it feels right for me. I'm putting it out because I feel like there's someone out there who needs to hear this and there always will be. And and then what influence do they have and what's the ripple effect of that? And I think you have to almost keep that focus. I mean, that's how I've always seen it. If there's one person that feels better for whatever I've put out there, then I'm happy with that because that to me feels they were ready to hear whatever it was that you were saying and it made sense to them. So happy days. And if they then feel good, it rolls in and this this purpose then it, it just almost goes off on its own doesn't it it takes itself to a different space and that that's really important to me too yes exactly and I think that people sometimes try to force things because they're like oh well this is what I think my purpose is and I'm not saying your purpose isn't going to take work like podcasting takes work <laughs> however sure. it's if it's meant to be for you it's going to end up slowly working out if you know you're meant to have these big organizations on your podcast or these celebrities it will work out like it will all come to you like you just have to put yourself out there first and just wait for it it's not going to happen overnight there are people yes that seemingly go you know viral overnight but that's not everybody and honestly i would rather slowly start to grow than have that overwhelm of like oh my goodness now i have 50 million followers what do i do with this? What do I do with this? Because I feel like that would be so much pressure. But if you slowly build up to it and get listeners or get people in your groups or get people in your corner, 
I don't know. I just, to me, it doesn't make sense with people that just feel like they need to do it for the numbers. And I saw something on threads a couple of weeks ago where this lady was asking whether or not people thought that it was right for her to take down episodes of the podcast after 30 days if the guest did not share it on their social media. And I was like, I'm sorry, but what exactly is the purpose of your podcast then if all it is is for your guests to share your podcast? Like, sure, I love when my guests share the podcast episodes. It's great. I love seeing their enthusiasm. I love seeing their, you know, followings, enthusiasm about it. And it does, you know, boost my numbers. And that's cool, too. But if that's the only purpose that you're doing it, like, I don't know. I feel like that's a very shallow purpose for a podcast to just get views or listens. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think so. I think for me, it's for all of us to, to, as we say, to work out what it is that your intentions, what is it that you're trying to do and set that intention. And then hopefully the energy flows through with that. So absolutely. Yeah. I think this is the thing with so many people these days is, as you say, they're focused on the numbers or the whatever the statistic side of things, which is kind of false because you can get some 10 people liking your post, but they've only just literally just flicked through and liked rather than genuinely. It's that genuine interaction, isn't it, that you want to get. That's what I value the most. I get emails from people or messages from people about some of the podcasts, for example, and they'll specifically say something that has really resonated for them. And that means so much to me than just having people kind of just liking it without really thought. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. I think, and like with reviews and stuff too, like those mean a lot. And I have had some friends be like, if they say that they love the podcast, I've been like, oh, well, can you go leave a review? Because that will help boost it. And not to say that I don't appreciate them leaving a review because I, I love that they do that. But having those people that I don't even know leave a review or reach out out of the blue or email me, it's like, whoa, like that is so cool. Or people from other country world and they've heard my voice and I don't even you know I've never even been to that side of the world so um I think that it's it's really powerful and you can make a huge difference I think and I'm not saying people that are just looking at the numbers that some of those numbers are not impacted by what they put out there and what they say because I'm sure that there are but I think that you can make more of an impact if you are trying to genuinely help people and not just focus on the numbers yeah because you're going to have more people that want to follow you because of your authenticity and i think that is the critical part of all of life really never mind something like socials and podcasts is tapping in i think we're crying out for connection with people humans you know i think the way that social's gone i see a lot of people who are desperately crying out for that genuine authentic approach to things and they're valuing that a lot more i'm sure that's the same for you over in the us as it is over here in the uk yeah i would i would say so at least some people i surround myself with i'm sure that there are people that aren't like that but i try to surround myself with people that want that because well yes sometimes do i crop out you know a dirty pile of laundry in my photo of course i do um but at the same time i don't feel the need to always have to do that or to always go on live or uh, take pictures with makeup or filters on. Sure. Do I use them sometimes? Absolutely. I feel like everyone does to a point, but I think that is like what you say. I feel like to me, if I'm reading a post and someone says something that is really impactful, but they're using this super filtered photo, I'm not saying that what they said doesn't matter it may not impact me, but I feel like it impacts me more if they're posting a genuine photo without filters or whatever, because I just feel like it comes off somewhat fake if it's a super edited photo, especially if they're like advertising for like a makeup product that they love. But you can tell that they have so much filter on their face. It's like, well, how much of that is actually the makeup that you love and how much is it actually like the filter? Um And so, yeah, I definitely try to surround myself with authentic people that want to 
actually put themselves out there. And yes, it's scary. It is so scary um, because I used to, when I was doing a lot of makeup lives, I used to be scared to go live without makeup to start with and then start to put my makeup on. Cause I'm like, well, what if people make fun of the way I put on my makeup or what if they make fun of the fact that my face is a little bit more red to start with, or I don't know. But I think the more that you do it, the more that it becomes easier and you crave that more in others. Um, because you're working just like working out, you're working that muscle of being able to not be afraid to put yourself out there. Yeah, I think so. And I think something that feels right to raise here is surrounding yourself by the, the right kind of people. It's something that you've cottoned on to. But if you are going to go for something, you know, set purpose, have a new f- something, and we've said already, it can be really small or it can be a medium, or it can be big, whichever you feel is right. But surrounding yourself with people who are going to be your cheerleaders, who are going to encourage you, maybe be honest with you as well. I think having that sort of team, if you like, there might be a team of friends, there might be a mixture of family, friends, etc. But having those around you, I think is really important as well to make sure that you if you set your purpose and you are setting off on a direction, you've got to have people who are going to support you, cheer you along and not necessarily do the opposite, which would be to pull you down and be negative. I don't know what your experience is, Abigail. Yeah, absolutely. So I have, I would say like different groups of friends from different points of my life. (laughs) Um, Different people I've worked with, different people, you know, part of my ministry groups, whatever. And, but I have certain people that I go to for certain things. Like I have like a handful that I generally talk to every single day that I know will tell me honestly, like, Hey, yeah, you kind of handled that situation. Not so great. But then I have other people where I feel really down and I know that they're not as close to me and they're not going to be as honest. I'm not saying I don't want honesty, but sometimes we just need somebody to tell us that we're great. (laughs) And so, you know, sometimes those are the people that I'll go to and be like, hey, I've had a really crappy day and I feel like I was a really bad friend. And they're like, no, no, you're not a bad friend. Um, And so I think we all need those type of people, like a variety of people in our lives. Um, but I do try to surround myself for the most part with people that would be honest with me. Um, some more brutally honest than others. And I'm the same way. Like I'll have certain friends where if they come to me with a problem, I'm not going to be as brutally honest with them. Then I have other friends where I'm like, you're just being kind of dumb right now. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) And I'll try to say it in the nicest way possible, obviously, but certain friends that I've had for like over a decade, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And there are times where they'll be like, I didn't want to hear this right now. And I'm like, you know me. We've been friends for 11 years. You know, if you come to me, I'm not going to lie to you. So if you want someone to, you know, just lie to you and pretend that it's okay what you just did, then go talk to them and not me. Um, But I definitely have surrounded myself with some really great people that are super supportive. And I do have people in my life that I wouldn't say I'm super close with or that are kind of just, you know, I don't want to say filler people because that just sounds terrible, but people that are like more of acquaintances. But I do have a good group of ladies, I think, in my corner, which is super awesome. And I think that's what, you know, hopefully listeners in, everybody will have no doubt a a group of friends or a a set of friends. But for me, sometimes it is about just giving those groups or that set of friends a little maybe an assessment sounds a bit formal, but, you know, just checking whether they are right for you, because I, I've certainly over the years, my friendship groups or the friendship sets of, rather than groups have changed because you might need different people or you maybe you grow out of people. I don't know. They might be going in a different direction to you. And I think sometimes, you know, we might have our friendships from our childhoods and they might be brilliant, but, I think sometimes it is good to pause, isn't it? And just look around at who is around and who is still good, still helpful, still part of the plan. But there are times where it is actually okay to just move away, isn't it? To move away from somebody who maybe isn't serving you anymore or it's just not working for you. Yeah, absolutely. I have some people in my life and that I... It's not that I don't check in on them and that I don't care whether they're good or not, but I won't check in on them as often because it's like, they're not checking in on me. And I, or when I do check in on them, they're not asking about me too. 
And I know that we all go through seasons where we're struggling and it's harder to be there for other people. But if that person is never reaching out to you and when you do reach out to them, all they do is talk about themselves. They don't even ask you, thank you or say like, thank you so much for reaching out to me. How are you? Mm -hmm. Or they do. But then when you tell them how you are, they don't respond to that. Those are the type of people that, yes, I'm not saying unfriend or block them on all social media, but don't check in on them all the time Mm -hmm. because I do not have the energy and the time to check in with all of everybody all the time. And so I want to be checking in on the people that are actually caring about what I have to say about myself too. And I don't think that it's selfish. I think for a very long time, I thought that that was selfish. And I've had people tell me that that was selfish, that I didn't check in on them as much anymore. And I'm like, well, you're not checking in on me. So, you know, and they're like, well, you run a ministry and you're a Christian. So you should, you should do that. And I was like, I understand what you're saying. And I'm not saying that I do not care about you, but I also am a human being who has limited time. I've got chronic illnesses. I do lots of different things. And I think that, you know, you have to invest in people that actually are trying to invest in your friendship as well. Um, Because it goes both ways. Yeah, I agree. And I think sometimes it's permission to make those assessments isn't it giving yourself permission to say actually I'm not going to reach out there it's not coming back in the same way and again it's not having it doesn't have to be a mate 100 even but it does need to have that Mm -hmm. sense of there's something in it for me or they are they are being a positive influence on, on your life and I think when we are trying to find our purpose and trying to push towards something maybe new that feels scary it's so important to have people around you who are going to support that change. And I think the two have to come getting clear on your purpose, but having the people there who will encourage you, question you, maybe pull you up a little bit, but, you know, all for the good. Absolutely. I completely agree. Like even with like the podcast, there were certain people and if anyone listens to this, <laughs> that I did send this to you, I'm not upset with you, but there were certain people that I was like, Oh, I feel like they would give me honest feedback. They have been super supportive. They've been a great friend. And so I sent them the link and said, hey, can you listen to my first couple episodes? I'd love your feedback. And half the people didn't do it. And they've never reached out again and been like, hey, you know, I didn't get a chance to, but now I have. And I know life happens. I totally know life happens and that's okay. But I think that that kind of showed me like they're not the type of people or that I need to be reaching out to you, you know, when I have a new episode that I'm excited about, or a guest that I'm excited about. And that's okay. I think just like purposes, I think our friendship circle can shift. And sometimes those people come back around. It's nice that purpose comes back around, you know, you may leave a career, or you may leave whatever it is for a time and then come back to it. And we all need to sometimes to step away and not have, like we said, this big grand purpose. Sometimes your purpose for this season may be rebuilding yourself. I know I had a season like that where I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and I was really, really struggling. And I had a lot of things that came up for me from ex, like past relationships, my childhood. And I did not have the energy to put that into any, like put energy into anything else. And that was my refill season. Refill was literally my word for the year. And I needed to be able to fill my cup and find what worked for me in this season so that I could move on to the next one. And especially as someone with chronic illness, I think if anyone is listening that has chronic health issues, I get it. Sometimes resting is really, really, really hard (laughs) because you want to do all the things, but if you know, that's what you need to do today you are doing what you need to do to get to the next season or the next day so that you can do more. And, you know, doing more does not add to your value. So doing less cannot subtract from it. Um, That is something that I've really learned in the last couple of years because I'm the type of person that always feels like I need to be Mm -hmm. doing something in order to matter. And you don't, you can Mm -hmm. just be, your worth does not fluctuate based on what you're doing. I love that. And I think it is a real reminder, isn't it, that sometimes that idea of doing nothing 
people get very scared of, but actually you're doing something in the doing nothing because you are relaxing or you're taking care of your body or you're healing or whatever you're doing. And I'm a big fan of remembering that that doing nothing is doing something and it's focusing on whatever that something might be. It's so, so important, isn't it? And I love the way you talk about seasons. You, you think you in the US talk about seasons a lot more than we do here. We talk about it in terms of the weather, but actually just hearing you talking about what's your, you know, what's your focus for this season? I'm thinking, oh, it's just turned the spring here. And <laughs> I'm thinking, I think we should use that more. We don't use that in the same way as you use it, the context. And I think we should uh, use it more because I think it, chunks the year down a bit so you can be focusing on this for this season uh, rather than I'm um, trying to focus on this for, and it just feels bigger so I love that I think um, just hearing you say that feels really resonates with me and feels really nice I love that yeah it's interesting like different places around the world have different expressions that they use and I think for me even in the United States I don't know if other um, regions have different things but in New England we have like every single season um, in very big ways and we're currently in spring um, as well. And um, winter, it literally feels like it just ended because two weeks ago we had a giant snowstorm here. Oh. But I think that it's more prevalent in New England um, with seasons because especially winter, because we get so much snow. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely use that phrase a lot <laughs> and like that analogy it. a lot. I, I like it, excuse me, in terms of us just being able to chunk our growth or our focus down as well as mm -hmm. why, the, why the weather's changing outside. You know, obviously for us in the UK, we talk about the weather a lot. Uh, we also have can have every season in one day here, potentially. But yeah, I think sometimes just being like for this season and that might just be for, say, three months or four months that you're just putting your attention on that and then you shift your attention. And I think in terms of purpose, I really see that, you know, maybe this is a new a new approach. It certainly is a new – you've got me thinking about something slightly different, so that's really nice. Awesome. Yeah, I think sometimes people get so focused on, like, the year, the beginning and the end of the year. And like, you need to have, uh, you know, your goal list or your resolutions and it needs to, you can't start until it's the first of the year. You can't start until the first of the month or the Monday or whatever. And I think sometimes it's so important to focus on the fact that maybe, you know, this chunk of time, this season, maybe in the middle of the year where you need to focus on this and that's okay. It doesn't have to be that you start this goal on a Monday or you start this goal on the 1st of January. Well, yes, those, I think it's kind of feels nice to start things like my season two of my podcast started at the beginning of the year. Um, but at the same time, I think the season beginning of the season would matter just as much if it started in the middle. Um, and I think that it needs to be more about what the goal is and what the purpose is or whatever, not so much on the day or the time of year that you start that purpose yeah. or that goal. I love that. I love that. But I really love the fact that the seasons offer something different from a weather point of view. So why don't we see the the year in these chunks of time and seasons? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that one, Abigail. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Oh, that I've loved our conversation. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to share before we finish? And I don't you know. think I I don't think I have any big thing to share. I've enjoyed this conversation as well, and I really appreciate you having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being the, this podcast being the first time that you are a guest. Hopefully, that'll be you'll have many more opportunities. But we will put all your details and the link to your podcast in the show notes so that people can come and find you and see what else you're doing. <laughs> Thank you for listening and sharing in this episode of Mental Wealth. Remember, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. My last question to you is what is the one small thing that you can take action on from this episode? Message me on Instagram or through our website with questions you'd like me to explore. You'll find the links in the show notes. 
I'll be back with more tools and tips to make sense of your mind in the next episode. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Bye for now. Thank you.